What score would you give the Prime Minister out of 10 in terms of how trustworthy he is? Yeah, I, I'd go, I'd go, I'd go ten out of ten, uh, but mainly because I want lots of things, and I want lots of things um, to happen. And you know, we've we've got complete, complete, complete confidence that that this is this in this country and in this leadership for us to you know get ourselves out of the uh, out of the. Um, uh, COVID pandemic and, and start to recover. So uh, as part of having complete faith in the country, it's complete faith in the leadership to, to make that happen. So yeah, I give Boris has my backing. Uh, I really want to see us all succeed. Uh, you know, and I'm genuine, genuinely looking forward to getting on with quite a lot of the, the, the tricky things that we know are outstanding. Siobhan, we've just heard some of the perspective from our uh, listeners, our viewers, I should say. Some say worst prime minister in a century. That may be a little bit unfair. How do you rate his performance of the last two years? Well, good morning, Ellie and Rosie. It's great to be here. I mean, it's been an incredibly difficult two years and it's certainly not what comes through uh, when I'm chatting to people in town uh, that, that, that anybody expects anything other than, than sort of... Uh, having to find his way through a pandemic that nobody was expecting. And um, I, you know, I think to be fair, he's, he's done a good job and shown some real leadership and particularly in the places like the vaccine rollout that, you know, we, we he backed the task force, you know, he, he made difficult decisions that people were kind of uh, tutting at at the time, particularly the opposition, but he's got us through and, you know, we're now seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. So yeah, not what anybody expected certainly not what Boris expected to be dealing with, uh, but, but we're moving forward. Siobhan, good morning. You look very beautiful. I love your hair. And um, many Tory MPs want the August 16th date for ending isolation for the double jabs brought forward, don't they? Oh, I, I do too. I mean, I, I think it's just a crying shame that we've worked so hard. We've you know, battled to, to get to this point of the roadmap. I would have liked to have seen it uh, uh, the restrictions list lifted back in June, and now we're dealing with this pandemic that is a, a great word, but is actually just crippling quite a lot of our businesses and people that want to go uh, go about their business. And and you know we know people are turning the app off at you know, a point where we've got that information. I think something needs to change, and we're, we're if we're confident in test and release, let's get on with it and get it brought forward now. Siobhan, do you uh, have the app? Are you using it? I've got the app, yeah, and I've got the app. I'm a good girl. I mean, but uh, I have to say, you know, I was I was taking steps from not going to Parliament very much this week. I did quite a lot by Zoom. I went in when I needed to make speeches and ask questions of ministers. Um, but I, you know, I, I wanted to protect my time in Stroud. I've been so looking forward to spending time in Stroud in the constituency with my visits. I'd have been absolutely gutted as a completely healthy person if I'd have been required to isolate. And, you know, I think a lot of people are looking ahead and thinking what do I do and you know how do I you know we, we, we want to trust we have to trust people to make decisions about their own risk and looking after their own families so once we know that uh, you know I, I think trust people and get on with this test and release. It's been a pretty uh, turbulent two years for the Prime Minister, not just because of the pandemic, but politically as well. You know, we had the saga uh, with Dominic Cummings, very recently the health secretary, accusations of bullying in the cabinet as well. What are your frustrations or regrets, let's say, of the last two years that you actually think hand on heart could have been handled better? Oh, without a doubt, you know, there is no government around the world that has managed to to get through this pandemic without making mistakes, without finding um, finding a way through. You know, this is a a virus that we we'd never seen before, and certainly not in my lifetime uh, anything that we've dealt with before. But you know, I, I think we have to give credit to to the prime minister. You know, I've mentioned the vaccines. We talk about that a lot, obviously. Um, but but he's shown global leadership in relation to uh, the, the the G7. We've got COP26 coming up. He is a go-to person for that. We've got sort of a lot of work being done um, in relation to domestic issues as well. I would like it faster, and I think I would like things to be happening faster. But we, you know, we, we've got to we've got to take stock of where we are. I do also think the minister has managed to land uh, and really communicate his vision for the country. Um, Leveling up is not just kind of slogans; it's about making sure um, that we are, uh, you know, looking after every single corner of, and, and every single part of this country in person. In it, so uh, I, you know, I, I think 
once we can get back to having the domestic agenda constantly on the television, I think that's where the Prime Minister will be judged and you know, we're already making progress. So uh, fair play to him and given everything that's been thrown at him. Siobhan, you've been talking there about his leadership and a survey in the I newspaper today says that most people think that Boris Johnson is disorganised, untrustworthy and inconsistent. Um, so Charles Walker says he would give the PM 8 out of 10 for performance to this date. Uh, what would you say to that? Well, it's, it's not what I've seen up close. I mean, undoubtedly, we've been, as I've, you know, I've mentioned a couple of times already, we've been, a lot of things have been thrown at us that nobody expected. Um, but what I've seen in the ministers um, working with them is that they've reacted quickly and with agility. Um, and then the prime minister is up top leading that. Um, so I think eight out of 10 from Sir Charles Walker. I love him and uh, is actually a really good score. So I think you have to you have to look at who's 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 giving that score at the moment. But, you know, there's always more to do. There's always more to learn. This is a job that most people on the street wouldn't want, uh, you know, if, if it was offered to them. So I think, uh, yeah, let him get on with it and let him let Boris show exactly what 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 he can do with the big issues of the day. Uh, and, I, and I think we will see um, some really excellent work in the autumn when we get back as well. Just very quickly, when it comes to the issue of trust and you've just said sort of eight out of 10 was a complimentary score. What score would you give the prime minister out of 10 in terms of how trustworthy he is? Yeah, I, I'd go, I'd go, I'd go ten out of ten, uh, but mainly because I want lots of things, and I want lots of things um, to happen. And you know, we've we've got complete, complete, complete confidence that that this is this in this country and in this leadership for us to you know get ourselves out of the uh, out of the. Um, uh, COVID pandemic and, and start to recover. So uh, as part of having complete faith in the country, it's complete faith in the leadership to, to make that happen. So yeah, I give Boris has my backing. Uh, I really want to see us all succeed. Uh, you know, and I'm genuine, genuinely looking forward to getting on with quite a lot of the, the, the tricky things that we know are outstanding. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.